It's already time for 2022's Advent of Code. If you're not familiar with Advent of Code, then consider this video your introduction and stick around for my tips on how to get the most out of your Advent of Code challenges. So Advent of Code is a set of 25 programming challenges that are released one per day throughout the first 25 days of December every year. This has been going on for, I think, the last like eight years, and you can find these at adventofcode.com. What you see here right now is my homepage. So I'm recording this video on December 3rd, and I've just finished challenge number three. So I'm going to walk you through what you need to know about getting set up, and then let's look at some tips on how to get the most out of these challenges. If you go to adventofcode.com, you can log in with an account. I just use my GitHub account to log in, and then you'll see the list of challenges for the year. Let's head into challenge number three. All of these challenges are kind of dressed up with a story around Santa or elves or something like that, but they usually boil down to either a data transformation or algorithms problem that you can solve. For example, today's challenge, day three, was to look for common characters in some sets of strings. Every challenge has two parts. There's a first part that kind of sets up the main chunk of the problem, and then there's always a part two that kind of gives a little twist on it. You can reuse a lot of work from the first part, but there's going to be some interesting twists that will definitely be a little bit challenging. Don't worry about seeing my answers here. The input that you will receive is generated for you, and so it'll be different for everyone. And then you can wait for the next day's challenge. Now, if you're not sure if this is something you can do, rest assured that it's not that hard. If you go to the about section here, you can see that you don't need a computer science background to participate. Just a little programming knowledge and some problem solving skills will get you pretty far. In fact, if you go to this problem solving skills link, you'll find a Reddit post that the author of Advent of Code wrote up to talk about some of the different types of skills you might need. So what do you need to know to get the most out of Advent of Code? Well, there are a couple of things I do that might be useful for you as well. First thing is going to be create an Advent of Code repository. I've done this for two reasons. First of all, feels like a no brainer. If I'm working on some code, I want it to be in a Git repository. But second of all, it's really cool to be able to go back to last year and take a look at the way I was solving some of these problems. Maybe you'll see ways that you've grown in how you try and solve a problem, or maybe a technique you used last year will help you figure out a way to solve a problem this year. You'll also see how your programming language and style preferences maybe have changed over time. Another great way to use Advent of Code is as a tool for learning a new programming language. That's exactly what I'm doing this year. So if we look at my 2022 folder, you can see that I'm actually using Rust this year. So here's a look at today's solution for me. These are the type of challenge that are often very tightly scoped. And so it's a nice small problem that you can start to solve in a brand new language. And don't be afraid of Googling for parts of the and don't be afraid to search the web for parts of your solutions. I'm at the stage of learning Rust where I spend more time reading the documentation or researching the standard library than I do writing code. But what I find is every time I finish one of these challenges, I feel like I really understand the language better. Another great idea, no matter what language you're attacking these problems in, is to create your own utility functions or helper files to speed up parts of this process. For example, I've created this utils crate in Rust, which allows me to get the lines of a particular file. I can just start by getting the lines. I don't even have to ask about the file name. And this works because I have the same file name set up in each one of these folders. So you can see I have the demo input and then I have the main input. If we go uh, up to this util folder here, you can see in here I have my helper files here where I can get the lines of a particular function and I actually choose based on an environment variable whether I want the demo input file or the input file. So this is common code here that I don't want to have to rewrite every day. And so it's really easy to just import this and I can immediately get to work on the problem and not have to worry about some of the scaffolding to set up the problem. And this is just a place to get started. Besides loading the input, there may be other operations that you find you do repeatedly, like maybe how you split a line or search for a character. If you find other ways to share code between the different challenges, then add them to your little utility library and save yourself time. Let's talk for a second again about the demo input versus is the input. If we go back to today's challenge, you'll notice two things. Pretty much any challenge will have some example input in the description and explain how that example input should be processed, and then also what the correct answer will be when you're processing this input. So what I like to do is copy this and save it to a file, like you saw, called demo input. This is a great way to essentially 
provide yourself some test cases where you can manually verify that your output is the same as the output in the description. Then when you're ready for your actual puzzle input, you can come to the get your puzzle input link and you'll get a much larger set of inputs that you can then run against the same code. The way I like to do this is with an environment variable where if I set demo equal to one, I'll get demo input. If I don't, I'll just get the normal input for the problem. Another tip, especially if you're trying to learn a new language with these challenges, is make sure your editor and environment is set up appropriately. Having the right language plugins installed in your editor can make all the difference in quickly discovering what is the signature of this new function that I've never used before, or what are the methods that I even have on this object. Having this set up and in line in your editor for you is way better than having to go to a browser and search documentation. My final tip is make sure you have fun with it. One of the great ways to do that is with the leaderboard. If you head over to the leaderboard, you can see the list of people who are working on these challenges and how far along they are. But even better than that, you can set up a private leaderboard. As you can see, I've got a private leaderboard set up with a couple of the folks I work with. And not only is this a great way to just have some fun and challenge each other to keep moving ahead with the challenge, if you're working on this with a set of friends, you can talk about the challenges. Maybe after you complete the challenges, you can look at how they did it in other languages. I'm working with folks who are doing these challenges in JavaScript, Rust, Python, Elixir, Swift. After learning how to solve the problem in your own language, you can take a look at some of the ways that it can be done in different languages. And it's really cool to compare the same logic in Python versus Elixir versus Rust, for example. If you don't have a private leaderboard, you can really easily create your own. Or if you want, you can join mine. I set up a private leaderboard here so anyone watching these videos can go ahead and join that. If you head over to my Advent of Code repo, I'll put a link to this down in the description, you can find what you need here in the README, a link to the private leaderboard and the code that you'll want to use to get connected. One last thing I'll point out about Advent of Code is that you don't have to be doing these problems right now in December. If you're watching this video when it comes out, then Advent of Code is happening now. If you're watching this much later though, you can still participate. If you go to the events page on the Advent of Code website, you can get access to all of the previous challenges. Right now we're on the eighth year, it looks like. Seven full years of challenges and then the eighth year is underway. So if you are trying to learn new languages, you just want to maybe brush up for interviews, something like that, these challenges are a great way to do that. All right, if you're working on Advent of Code this year, I would love it if you shared maybe your repository or some of the things that you learned from doing it in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hmm. Hmm.